A cheerful day to everyone. Today we are going to see a son of questions. What is an a son of question? An a son of question is called as a closed question. In English, there are two basic types of questions. A son of questions and WH questions. A son of questions are also called closed questions because there are only two possible responses. Yes or no. When forming a yes or no question, it must include one of these verbs. Be, do, have or a modal verb. It is impossible to ask a yes or no question without any one of these verbs. For example, are you hungry? No, I am not. Are you feeling sleepy? Yes, I am. Let's see the rules of making a yes or no questions. To make a question from a sentence with a be verb, we normally use question word order. We can do this by switching the subject and the be verb around. Now look at these sentences. He is tall. Is he tall? In the question, the verb is first and then the subject. So there is an inversion of the question word order here. They are American. So it goes like, are they American? The children are at school. Are the children at school? The rules are the same for past tense. They don't change anyway. For example, let's have a look at those sentences. It was nice. Was it nice? New York was expensive. Was New York expensive? We were late. Were we late? Now, look at this grammar chart. This chart explains to you what to use subject and how should be the formation. For am, are, is. There are no questions. How do we make them? First, am, are, is. If the subject is going to be I, you, we, they, he or she or it. Then the formation goes like this. Noun, verb plus ing, preposition, adjective. So here we have options like your student, studying, at school, we see. So the question formation for the sentences will be, I am a student, it will be, am I a student? You are a student will be, are you a student? We are studying will be, are we studying? They are studying will be, are they studying? They are at school. It becomes, are they at school? She is busy. Is she busy? And now here the answers for these questions. Maybe only one of these options given here in this call. Either it could be, yes I am, yes you are, yes we are, yes they are, yes he is, yes she is, yes it is, or else, no I am not, no you are not, no we are not, no they are not, no he is not, no she is not. No, it is not. And now coming to the questions with do or does. Do I study? Do we study? Do we study? Do they study? Does he study? Does she study? Does it study? So for these questions, what could be the answers? Yes, you are right. Definitely they should be. Yes, I do. Yes, you do. Yes, we do. Yes, they do. Yes, he does. Yes, she does. Yes, it does. 
Or, no, I don't. No, you don't. No, we don't. No, they don't. No, he doesn't. No, she doesn't. No, it doesn't. Now, let's see some more rules. Now, the next factor here is making yes or no questions with auxiliary or modal verbs. We know well that an auxiliary verb is also called a helping verb. These are short words that help the main verb create tense. For example, look at the sentence. I have written the report. This is in present perfect tense. Here we have have as the auxiliary verb, which is helping the main verb write change into present perfect tense. So, modal verbs such as can, must, should, might, may are also called helping verbs. Here are some more examples for you. I was writing. I am writing. I will write. I can write. I should write. So, here what could be the answers? Well, you are right. Good. Was I writing? Am I writing? Will I write? Can I write? Should I write? Sentences always have a main verb. But if a sentence also has a helping verb, auxiliary or modal, then you need to switch the subject and the helping verb wrong. This is how it goes. For example, he will come. It changes into, will he come? They are visiting Paris. Are they visiting Paris? She has done the housework. Has she done the housework? So now, we come to another rule. How to frame yes or no questions for sentences with two helping verbs? Sometimes there are sentences which have two helping verbs. If this is the case, change the order of the subject and first helping verb the same way. Then after the subject, what are we going to do? Yes, put the second helping verb. Now look at this example. John has been fired. Has John been fired? How is this construction made? We take the helping verb. Has. Helping verb 1 we are taking here. So the helping verb 1 here is has. So, has plus subject. What is the subject in the sentence? John. So, has John. What is the second helping verb? We find that to be been. So, has John been. What is the main verb? Fired. So, we retain the tense and we don't make any changes in the tense. So, it goes like this. Has John been fired? And now, coming to the next one, making yes or no questions without the be verb or an auxiliary or modal verb. So what are we going to do? We will use two forms of two. Now here, if you look at the first sentence, I have a problem. The main verb here is how. It does not function as a helping verb. So there is no helping verb in the sentence. She loves tennis. The main verb here in the second sentence is loves and there is no helping verb. They found the answer again here. Only the main verb found is here. Which then is past tense. So the first sentence becomes Do you have a problem? I becomes you. End question. So do you have a problem? The second one becomes, does she love tennis? The next one, they found the answer becomes, did they find the answer? So, uh, we use simple present tense. Yes. Now, there are some exercises to reflect what we have learned today and to have fun. The first sentence here, she is a good person. 
So, we have one auxiliary verb here. So, how will you change the question? Yes, that's good. Is she a good person? That's right. Now, coming to the second one. They are studying hard. Here again, we have got an auxiliary or modal verb, are. Okay, so what do we do here? Are they studying hard? Okay, now to the third sentence here. I don't want a drink. So it goes like this. Okay. So, how can we have it? Do you want a drink? So, the negative form will become positive form. Remember it when we have negative sentences given. And we need to frame a yes or no questions. The negative form becomes positive form in question form. So we go to the question word order. I don't want to drink this. Don't will become do. Okay. Suppose does not is given as negative form. Then does will be the question word. As we have here don't, it becomes do you want to drink? Now, coming to the fourth example, the book was sold. So, the sentence is given in past tense. So, we have here two verbs. One is the auxiliary verb and then the main verb sold. So, how can we have the question? We just have the question word order. So, first comes the auxiliary verb followed by the verb, the subject. Yes, good, you are right. Was the helping verb plus subject plus the main verb. So, the question becomes, was the book sold? Now, going to the fifth question. My dog barks loudly. So, we have the question to be in with yes, does, good. So, my dog becomes does your dog bark loudly. So, the answer is does your dog bark loudly. Okay, coming to the last sentence. We are going to try it. So, the sentence is in continuous form. There is already an auxiliary verb here, are, followed by a main verb in continuous tense. Going to is an infinity, to infinity form. Okay? And which is again followed by try. This again is another main verb. So, how are we going to have this? We are going to try it. As we saw earlier, we will have the auxiliary verb as the question verb. So, here what comes? R, V. Now, the subject will be following it. So, R, V. That's fine. So, the remaining part of the sentence will follow just it is. We aren't going to change anything here in the sentence. So, the question now becomes, are we going to try it? SONO questions are simple to be framed once you master the rules and regulations. You can easily frame SONO questions without any hesitation or confusion. Hope you understood how to frame yes or no questions. Thank you for listening. Have a good day.